want to be a teacher that the students want to come to to learn. I don't want them to feel like they have to come to me. I want them to be excited about learning because I take the initiative, I take the responsibility on my shoulders to create meaningful experiences, meaningful assignments they are going to engage with and that they will remember. You know, there's that quote, they may not remember what you taught them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And that's the kind of teacher that I want to be. That is filling little hearts and minds one lesson at a time. So I'm on the go today, but I want to talk about something that I think is important, and that is fidget spinners. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk about fidget spinners. It's a busy day for me, and I'm going to bring you on the road as I chat about this topic that has seemed to plague our classrooms. You may or may not have experienced fidget spinners yet, but fidget spinners are these little tiny devices that kids use and play with, and they seem to absolutely love them. Who knew that fidget spinners actually were created for a purpose? I did a little bit of research and digging, and I found out that fidget spinners were actually created for children with special needs. And yes, these are my Casey Neistat glasses. These are not mine. I'm actually returning them to a friend. Fidget spinners were originally created for children with special needs. They were created to help students practice their fine motor skills. Fidget spinners really didn't become popular until 20,000. Fidget spinners didn't really become popular until 2017, but they've become one of those fads that teachers unfortunately have to deal with. I say unfortunately because if you don't have guidelines and standards for your classroom, these fidget spinners, fidget cubes, can become a nightmare. Uh, but they were actually created in 1993. Thank you, Wikipedia. Fidget spinners and fidget cubes have become so popular that some schools have actually banned them because they feel like the students are getting more distracted instead of learning. And then other schools allow them um, as long as the children are playing with them in a discreet way. We all have those students in our class, the ones who can't sit still. To be totally honest, I was one of those students. Maybe they bite their nails, they want to stand up and move, you're always reminding them in kindergarten, we always say, touch your tummy. Um, maybe there's other students who get out of their seats a lot, whatever the case is. These fidget spinners were or advertised to help students not fidget. However, a study that was done in 2017, this year, the year that I'm recording this video, says that there has been no proof or evidence that says that these fidget spinners are actually doing that, that they're actually helping. Do you let your students use fidget spinners? Does your school ban them? Or do you have certain rules and guidelines that you use? So I'm gonna share with you our classroom guidelines I personally do not mind starting the year off trusting students. Our school has not banned fidget spinners. And I feel like every student needs the opportunity to have the self-control that it takes and not break the trust um, between me and the classroom guidelines for our fidget spinners. So I let all of the students start off using fidget spinners in the year with the understanding that they have to follow the guidelines, otherwise their contract could be broken. So I give each student our classroom guidelines for fidget spinners. The first week of school we sit down and we go over what the rules are, what the expectations are, and I say rules but I really like to say guidelines. I give them a contract. <sighs> Which grade do I want to grab? We sit down together we talk about the expectations, we talk about, um, make sure it's locked. So what are the guidelines? Number one, we use our fidget spinners during appropriate times. And then we'll talk about it. What are appropriate times? I ask them questions like, when you're in the restroom, is using your finish, is using your fidget spinner in the restroom an appropriate time? What about when you are doing independent work. Is that an appropriate time? Yes, that would be an appropriate time. So we basically just kind of talk through 
what an appropriate time would be, really break it down. I let them talk, I let them answer, I cue them on stuff, but I really want them coming up with scenarios. Guideline two, we put our fidget spinners away if they become a distraction to us or to our friends. If our fidget device is not helping us accomplish the task at hand, we will be asked to put our fidget spinner away. And that leads me to our third guideline, which is if our fidget spinner distracts us from our primary task, we will be asked to put it away. I think if we keep in mind that the goal of the fidget spinner is to help the students who fidget stay focused. It's not something that we give to them to help them fidget, right? It's something that they need to be able to use while they're still doing another task. And so if that goal is not being accomplished, then the fidget spinner is not for them. Our fourth guideline is that we do not share our fidget spinners. We do not trade our fidget spinners. If you are coming to school with a fidget spinner, it is because you fidget. And if you are the one that fidgets, your parents feel like you need the fidget spinner to stay focused, then you are the one that has to have it. Guideline five is something that we practice in kindergarten, and that is to obey the first time. If a teacher asks you to put your fidget spinner away, you do not argue, you do not say why, you simply say, yes teacher. And there is no arguing because the teacher does not have time to argue with all of the students in the classroom about a fidget spinner. The teacher is there to teach. And asking you multiple times to put your fidget spinner away is not fair to the rest of the class because the students are there to learn and the teacher is there to teach. After we go over all the... Blah, after we go over the guidelines, I hand the students a contract. If you don't sign this contract, you may not have a fidget spinner in my classroom. Signing this contract means that you understand and are going to commit to obeying the rules, the guidelines, following the guidelines. A fidget spinner's purpose is to help a student not fidget. A fidget spinner was actually invented for students with special needs and autism to help them work and practice their fine motor skills. A student who has a hard time sitting still, a student who is naturally a fidgeter, someone who bites their nails, clicks their pen, um, plays with their hair, gets out of their seat, shakes their leg, kicks their feet, whatever, a fidget spinner is something that is supposed to help those students divert that energy to their hand fidgeting with their hand. If the fidget spinner is not accomplishing that goal, that task, and is making the student fidget more and distracting the student, then that student might not be a good candidate for a fidget spinner. that in their learning. So one way that I do that is by giving them activities that incorporate fidget spinners. There's that quote, they may not remember what you taught them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And so creating those meaningful experiences for your students in class by incorporating things that they love already is so key. So I've tried to think of ways to incorporate fidget spinners in the students' learning. Um, I've created a few activities, one that I'll show you here. I glue a little arrow on one of the sides of this fidget spinner and then the students spin the fidget spinner and they ask the other student or students in their group the question that the fidget spinner landed on and then they write the response that the student said on their response sheet. This activity accomplishes two things. The first thing it accomplishes is it helps the students get to know one another and it's a great kind of like icebreaker game. The second thing that the activity does is it helps the students engage because they're using something that they love to play with anyways. Oh my goodness. I just got all of that wood for eight dollars. I want to be a teacher that the students 
want to come to to learn. I don't want them to feel like they have to come to me. I want them to be excited about learning because I take the initiative, I take the responsibility on my shoulders to create meaningful experiences, meaningful assignments, and projects that they are going to engage with and that they will remember. You know, there's that quote, they may not remember what you taught them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And that's the kind of teacher that I want to be. That is filling little hearts and minds one lesson at a time. Thank you so much for joining me as I have meandered through my day. You've kind of come along with me today as I have gone from task to task. If you would like to snag the fidget spinner activity that I talked about in today's video, I've linked it down below. It includes the contract, the rules or guidelines, and the activity. Also, I just want to invite you to subscribe to this channel. My goal is to share information with you that is relevant to your teaching experience. So please consider subscribing because anytime I upload new content, you get a notification and that's just a really fun way for us to stay connected. So it was nice to meet you and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.